In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel from John has a chiastic bracket. That is to say, the opening verses are matched and answered by the concluding verses. So at the beginning of this passage, we hear that the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. They themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. The conclusion of this gospel is, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So at the beginning, they go looking for him. At the end, he says to them, whoever comes to me will never be hungry. In between, we have a dialogue of three sets of questions. The followers, literally those who followed him, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they ask, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus doesn't answer that question. The question he answers is why they came looking for him. And then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? This is the work of God, says Jesus, that you believe in him whom he has sent, whom God has sent. The last question is, what sign are you going to perform so that we know that it's you that we should believe? Because our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. Kind of like, show us what you got. Jesus says to them, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. But it is my father who gives you, in the present tense, gives you now the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So he hasn't answered the sign question yet. And they've forgotten that the day before, Jesus fed 5,000 of them with five loaves and two fish, that everyone present was fed. And then they ask him, sir, give us this bread always. It's not really a question. It's more of a statement. And then he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So with that, I am the bread of life, which he is defined as the true bread from God is that which comes down from heaven to give life to the world. That's him. That's him. And they don't know really what to do, because now they are standing in the presence of he, he, he who God sent to give life to the world. And in the middle, that central question is what, what, what must we do to perform the works of God? We have to believe in him whom God has sent. So really what they were fed with the day before was the presence of God. Yes, bread for the body, the presence of God for their eternal salvation. Everybody was fed in that story. And they even had enough left over to feed more people. So in the story of the feeding, the bread that fed 5,000 and more is the sign and the symbol of the presence of God. And the outward and visible sign of that is that everybody was fed. And here we are gathered around a table to receive the sacrament of the body of Christ, bread. That same bread that fed the 5,000 feeds us, except that we know 
that what we, who we are receiving is the bread of life, the son of God, who is now or will be very soon one with us and we in him. So our work is to do God's work to believe in Jesus, to understand that what has been given us, to each of us, has been given to everyone, that we all share in the one bread, which is the gift of God to each of us and to many, and that the bread that we share is the sacrament and the presence of God in our lives. So let us not discount our own experience of the divine of seeing God in the other, of reaching out to be generous, just as Christ was generous. May we be able to see God in ourselves and in each other. May we, like Jesus, be a sign of God's love to the world. And may we, through our life together, be vehicles of grace for all. Amen.